Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host James Sullivan and welcome to Film Ireland, UK TV's number one place for film and TV entertainment news. We have a great panel for you today, and also an exclusive interview with Gaelic director Jordan Peele, which you will not want to miss. Later on, we have Sam, who will be speaking about the new movie Young Offenders, and we also have Owen, who will be talking about Iron Fist, Marvel's fourth in the series of shows. Before we get into all that, we have Brian with us today. Brian, how are you James, going? thanks for having me. Now, Brian believes that Claro Beauty not only deserves to be nominated for an Oscar, but he thought it should have won Best Picture at the Oscars. So, Brian, before we get into that, Tell us a little bit about this movie. Sure. Uh, retreating from life after tragedy, a man questions the universe by writing to love, time and death. Yeah. Receiving unexpected answers, he soon begins to see how these things interlock and how even loss can reveal the moments of meaning and beauty. Wow, that's a, that's a great synopsis, Brian. I'd like to talk about straight up on your TV. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate yeah. it. You do? Okay. Yeah. And now, big actors in this film, would I be right in saying so? Yes, yes. The cast for this movie is amazing. We have the fantastic Will Smith playing the male lead and the beautiful Kate Winslet and Kara Knightley, to name a few. Oh, it's very good. Good good list. Now, critics have been not very nice to this film. The Irish Times even went as far as saying it was a flop and it should never have been made. So, what do you think should be nominated for an Oscar? Never mind winning an Oscar. Look, the premise is implausible and it's a little crazy, but it's so well acted. All right. There are some intense dramatic moments in this movie, and all the actors are on their A game. It's not too often we see these type of actors in an old school Hollywood melodrama. Yeah. All right. So yeah, Cloud Beauty is going to get ripped to shreds by many of the same critics that want to see an explosion on top of explosions until there is no originality left in Hollywood. Um, it, that's why it's all a threat to them. Okay. But personally, I think this is a special movie that sheds a light on the tragedy of love. Uh, uh, loss and grief, and I think it deserves a lot more credit. Okay, I, I understand where you're coming from now. I must say to the viewers at home that if you are going to judge this film, at least go see it first, because critics aren't always right. Now, personally, I wasn't a fan of this film, but that's just my opinion. Now, Brian, thank you so much for coming in today, and that's all the time we have for. Thanks for having me. Now, we will um, show you... Um, sorry about this now. Um, so we are now going to um, go to Owen, sorry, uh, having some technical difficulties. We're going to go to Owen now, who turns it outside of Marvel Studios. Take it away there, Owen. Thanks, James. Here we are outside Disney Studios, who are home to Marvel, the ones responsible for the controversial new TV series Iron Fist. Available on Netflix, the show has received criticism since its release date on March 17th of this year. Critics demolish the news show as Ferris wrote, Iron Fist isn't just racially uncomfortable, it's also a boring show. Radio Times said, Iron Fist, a second rate daredevil that matches the low expectations. The main character supposedly spent 15 years with Monk's training his body and mind to become the powerful Iron Fist. But his angry outbursts and flipping remarks remind the viewers more of a child than a disciplined warrior monk. Hopefully they can do better in their next outing with the Defenders, which is due out next year on Netflix. Back to you in the studio, guys. Thanks, Owen. We are now going to take a quick commercial break, but do not go anywhere, as we will be right back. Hello, ladies. Look at your man. Now back to me. Now back at your man. Now back to me. Sadly, he isn't me. But if he stopped using ladies' scented body wash and switched to Old Spice, he could smell like he's me. Look down. Back up. Where are you? You're on a boat with the man your man could smell like. What's in your hand? Back at me. I have it. It's an oyster with two tickets to that thing you love. Look again. The tickets are now diamonds. Anything is possible when your man smells like Old Spice and not a lady. I'm on a horse. Welcome back to the show. We now have Sam in the studio, so to say. Sam, James. nice having you. 
Now, you went to see Young Offenders. Is this an Irish film? It is. It premiered on the 8th of July in the Galway Film Festival last year. Okay. Um, it already grossed over 1.2 million in Ireland itself, so it's doing very, very well in this country. Oh, very good. Now, doing well in this country, but as it is an Irish comedy, do you think they will um, have a good audience internationally as they might not get a humour? Um, yeah, I still think I will. I mean, it's doing well in Canada, America, Australia, and New Zealand, to name a few. It has five-star ratings on a good few countries' Netflixes. Mm. It's mixing humour very well with touching heart feeling moments and I think yeah you don't have to be Irish to understand it. Okay well thank you it sounds like a good movie and um, sorry Sam but that's all the time we have for. Okay, thank you. And um, we are now going to go to the interview I had Gail director Jordan Fierro earlier this week. Hi Jordan and um, thanks for coming in and seeing me today. Now this was your first major directing gig and um, were you nervous at all or did you just know it was going to be a smash hit? I was pretty psyched I mean this was a movie I didn't think was going to get made um, it was, you know, I wrote my favorite movie that didn't exist. It was, it started as a writing exercise. Like, if I could, if they let me, what would I do? And I was like, you know what? That, I, there's no movie, there's no horror movie that deals with modern racism. And um, so when I, when I was, you know, met the producers that were, um, that got it, and were like, let's do it. That to me was just like, that just put more wind in my sails. And I was like, look. At the very least, I can I get a chance to make my favorite movie here, yeah. and um, it's up there. It's up there. It's in my it's my top, my top ten. Very good, very good. Now, when I saw the movie, I was I was amazed by the performances that I saw, but especially from the main actor um, Daniel. What what can you say about him as an actor? Daniel's a star, and the the one of the best things about him is like he's so he's so reactive. You know, his his style is like. Just, just get me in the moment. Get me in the emotional space, and get me in the moment. And he will do, he he, he will do, fill in the the empty spaces with just beautiful choices and reactivity. And it was like, it was like, I, I mean, I just struck gold with this guy. Okay, Jordan. Well, I'm afraid that's all the time we have for. But I'm, I'd really like to thank you again for coming in today. Back to you at the studio, James. Thank you, James, you handsome devil. Now we are going to show you a quick trailer of the new movie, Beauty and the Beast, which is in theaters everywhere. Look, a girl. Yes, I can see it's a girl, you fool. What if she is the one? I'm afraid that's all, folks. But until next time, I've been your host, James Sullivan, and thank you for watching. Honey, child, stop moving.